Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men have asked me for the right words to say to be more attractive, desirable, and more of a leader. And I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because at the root of a connected and affectionate relationship and being more effective and inspiring at work is your ability to influence others. But most often influence is not gained or lost with words. It's from what I call the invisible factors. So I created a quick guide for you called three ways men lose influence at work and with women. So you can understand how these invisible factors work and what has women and colleagues both more inspired to say yes. I think you're also going to be surprised to find out the moment when your influence actually begins. So grab the guide for free at shanajamescoaching.com slash three ways. That's shanajamescoaching.com slash the number three and the word ways, W-A-Y-S. Or you can text ALIVE to 44144. That's the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144. I hope you enjoy the guide and this episode. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to be here today to talk about topics that are close to my heart and working with men around vulnerability and connection. And we're going to look through the lens today of emotional CrossFit or a gym for your insides, right? A place to go practice that's not for the physical aspect, but for the emotional aspect and how you can actually stay connected in your life. So I'm really grateful to have Dan Doty here today. Dan, thank you for being here. You're welcome. I'm grateful to be here with you. And Dan is the CEO and co-founder of Every Man, which is a company that brings men together to exercise their emotions so they can lead more successful, fulfilling lives. And his previous work includes producing and directing outdoor-based TV and film, teaching in a public high school in the Bronx, and spending 600 days in the wild as a wilderness therapy guide for disadvantaged and at-risk young men. Dan has appeared on the Today Show, has been a guest on the acclaimed Joe Rogan podcast, and has been featured in Men's Health Magazine. So thank you, first of all, for doing this work for and with men and for everything that I know it takes to actually you know, be living it yourself. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to thank you. It's the it's what I love to do, and uh, yeah. So thank you, though. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things as I was watching your TED Talk, which I highly recommend, if you listening haven't seen it, you know, one of the things that I was appreciating is that you took vulnerability and put it into a framework of what men need to learn it. And you went through, you know, number one, permission, number two, direction, and number three, a place to practice. So I'm curious if you can describe a little bit, you know, about each of those phases and um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Yeah, sure. I feel like uh, those three levels are something you could look at at the cultural level, but uh, also specifically on the individual. And the permission part, <clears throat> is simple. It's that m- many men in our culture, uh, I want to say most, but I, I don't have data to back this up, mm-hmm. but ma- many men uh, feel or are st- still uh, in a mode of living in which emotions and self-expression and uh, self-awareness is not uh, valued. Yeah. And is not seen as carrying value. So the permission right. and is feared. I would say, right? The oh yeah, fear. absolutely feared and reviled or demeaned or dismissed. Many things. It's mm-hmm. you know, it's just not the, it's not the standard American male uh, version. At least, right. at least, not all the way. Right? No, no. It's a really good way to put it. Right? Not the standard yeah. American male version. It's not what you see in the media. It's not what you see, you know, on the internet. Right? It's it's you know, you're totally. doing this work and there are some great men doing this work to, to make it more the norm, but it is not, it's not so yet. 
hundred percent. So the permission part is literally that's the outreach part. That's the getting out there. And you know, those media appearances, which you mentioned have been, I've been very grateful and felt very lucky to have those opportunities because literally in the, maybe in the simplest way, I feel like what I and we are trying to do is get out in front of the world and as many people as we can and say, Hey guys, so you can still be tough. You can still be strong. Yeah. You can still be, you know, aggressive when it's appropriate, but guess what? Also, yeah. there are these parts of your life where you're just, you're just ignoring, you're repressing much of what you do and guess what? It's hurting a lot of other people. It's actually yeah. hurting you. Can we just be, can we slow down and be smart about this? So that's the permission part. It's just like, and I think that it's amazing. So, you know, now with hundreds or thousands of men that have are working with every man or been a part of every man that um, there's a moment, there's an, a moment of inflection where a man recognizes that there it's either there's enough pain pushing him to try something new or the curiosity or the acceptance, right? I mean, it's, it's amazing once actually one of, if I could, one of the most incredible things about what's happened so far in the last couple of years with every man is that the amount, what we hear back from the culture and from men. And, and I, you know, I'm sure there's many people that see it and are like, Ugh. but what we're hearing in, such a massive way yeah. is finally yes thank, thank you awesome you know and for men and women alike so yeah well and yeah. and i think right i mean as a woman and having worked with men for a long time and and connecting with a lot of women right there there is a longing that many many women have for men mm. vulnerability and emotions and then there's also the fear on our side of what that means when it shows up and what do I do and how do I navigate yeah. this? And, you yeah. know, and then I see men who have, you know, come in to work with me and have, have really their whole lives just stuffed it, right? Shoved yeah. their emotions down, just been taught, okay, you're, you, you will be more loved. You will be more wanted if you just keep it all inside. But there does, yeah. right? there, there, there's that breaking point where I think most men at some point, right, start to look at themselves and realize, oh my God, you know, this hurts or this is this yeah. is awful or this is hurting yeah. someone else. Absolutely. And, I, and so, you know, moving to the second one, the direction or, or maybe even more accurately would be education is, is, mm -hmm. is framing this as a skill set and a tool set of regular, all humans have this emotional capacity, this emotional need. Mm -hmm. And, making it just an educational experience, like, like trying to take out some of the shame and the, the underlying emotion around emotion and just saying, hey, you didn't get taught this. It's, you know, we, we could sit and we could blame people, we could point fingers, all that. And all that is probably some validity to it. But really, honestly, what we have here is a simple process to get in touch with yourself. And when you're in touch with yourself, you have the capacity to be more in touch with other people. Yeah. And from that state of more connectedness, just literally naturally flows an outpouring of goodness mm -hmm. for oneself and for other people. And it's not complicated. Yeah. It is scary, but it's not complicated. It's very simple. It's actually it's, quite simple, right? It's oh, it's so simple. <laughs> Well, it's the undoing. And, and so that's, I mean, I think, you know, that's what we do at every man is we have a super simple process and, and it's, it's simply that we slow down. We, we deepen our self-awareness by paying attention to our body and our emotional state. Mm -hmm. And then we take the leap of sharing it with other guys. That's actually all it takes. I mean, yeah. obviously there's nuances and subtleties and you can go many directions, but that's actually, it's a simple codified way to be present and in touch. Hmm. So really just to slow down, to, to pay attention to yourself and then to share it. And how do you work with men when, I mean, I've had men come in and when I've said, what are you feeling or what's happening for you? And the response is, I'm good or I'm fine. Or, you know, it might even be a, a, a little bit farther along the line than that into feeling a little bit of something, but yeah, not much. Well, so... We have, we have several different avenues, but you actually just highlighted one, which is really simple and great, which is minimizing and maximizing what we're saying. So we ask men, we give them a simple set of 
basic emotions, anger, sadness, fear, shame, joy, uh, missing one or two there, but some simples. And we try to keep it rooted in that simple, basic language and help men really identify what those are. Mm -hmm. And so we, we make feeling a little of something in unacceptable. We say, <laughs> go back, take out the little and say it again without oh, the right. you can't qualifier. Say, I'm sad. I'm big. Yeah. It's just, are you sad? I'm sad. Just uh -huh. simple, just uh -huh. to the point. Um, I mean, that's one very little sort of technique, but, but really we model, we do this by modeling and, and that is another major part of every man that, that is really um, catching people's attention and, and really helping people get through because we have like, even I lead these retreats on the lead facilitator and we got, you know, 70 men in a room, but I myself am going through the process right. also I'm leading by example. And that is, in this emotional realm, it is such an experiential thing. We really, it's hard to learn this stuff from an analytical or intellectual perspective. It actually doesn't work. No, you, you can't, right? And, and I really saw in your TED Talk, you know, I sent it to a group of men I'm working with around, you know, how to have more influence and part of that's being more emotionally available. And I said, here's an amazing example of a man who is willing to feel deeply and be impacted by his own life and his experiences and then share them in front of people, you know? So you, you are modeling that, like you said. Yeah. And the cool, it, the cool thing is that seems to be universal, right? Yeah. So yeah. So if you got guys in the room who've never done anything like this or they're hesitant or whatever, I mean, I don't care who you are. If somebody's next to you, you know, opens their mouth and says they're so terrified that their wife is going to leave them and I'm, and I'm gripped in fear. Yeah. I mean, you will feel that. And, and that resonance between people, that is the space in which we uh, play. That is the space mm -hmm. in which we learn and operate and even create from. And it's, it's this yeah. understanding that the experience of our emotions are a deliberate and massive gateway to connection with others. Mm. And then when we make that primary, when we slow down enough to hear someone and yes. more than hear, but feel them, because yes. that's the thing. That's the, like we do that. I mean, that is part of being human. And it's, you know, I don't think, um, I mean, we're not the, we're not unique in what we're doing exactly here, but we're making that primary mm -hmm. and we're, asking each other to let ourselves be impacted by each other. Yes. And, and that's a lot of times for guys who are just getting into this, that is what opens them up. That is, yeah. that is what drops them deeper because, uh -huh. because somebody else feels something and then all of a sudden they're like, oh man, okay, me too, <laughs> me too. Right. But then they actually have the experience. It's not, yeah. just the, it's not just the understanding of it, but it's just like, my God, I'm sad too. Right. No. Then, I, yeah, I, yeah. I've seen that so many times. And, you know, I've had the good fortune to be in rooms of men who are feeling and feeling from each other and being impacted by each other. And I mean, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced, right? To see one yeah. man who, you know, is kind of holding back and being strong or tough in that way of traditional masculinity. And then suddenly, like, you know, he, it's like you can tell he starts to feel right from what another man is experiencing or in my case we've had you know groups of men and women doing this together too so totally yeah it's such a it's it's profound and you know it is interesting when you were saying before you just it, it's kind of like this normalization we did not learn this when we were young i always i'm so confused that we don't have education when we're young it's starting to happen you know with my yeah. son and your kids will get it right around yeah. emotional connection and communication and things that just haven't happened until now, which is shocking. It, well, you're right. It's, it's normalizing it and it goes back and it's, it, it adds to the permission, right? Yes. It, it, it supports that permission in a larger way because I mean, really what it often feels like, and I'm, you can, I'm sure you've seen things like this, but many men, in one way or another seem to be walking around like holding their breath in, yes. you know, metaphorically speaking, just like, just like there is so much freedom that simply comes from the recognition that mm. I can just I can be, exhale. I can, well, I can just be what I am. I can feel what I feel. I yeah. can, I can allow, I don't have to hold like the amount of holding back men yes. do is 
Herculean. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. It's really insane. And um, yeah, the normalization is amazing. I mean, my two and a half year old Duke has uh, more emotional awareness than I did when I was probably 22. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's i think that's actually true <laughs> i think it's true too it's amazing to see you know how my son is paying attention to me and how i look and that i look sad in one moment or you know asking me questions about what i'm feeling i'm like wow mm. you know this is amazing and um i was just thinking too where did i go there was something around what you were saying where um yeah you know the the willingness to be impacted by each other. And I, I just love that you're getting men together in a group because that also I've seen when I bring men together, you know, there can be that hesitance or that reluctance or that sense of if I express this, I would think I was weak or I was unmanly or whatever, but I can see another man express it and I can start to get that that's not true and then start to realize oh, those judgments and the layers of thoughts about what I'm feeling are a completely separate realm than just what I'm actually feeling. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All of that noise piled on top of what's just actually there. It's, yeah. in, it's, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, I was in my men's group last night here and um, with a younger guy who joined the group about six weeks ago. And yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. And, it, and it's, it, just lights me up all the time to, you know, I won't share his name because we have confidentiality, but i share just a little bit about the, the basic uh, struggle he's been going through. And it's exactly what we're saying. And, you know, he'll share how he's feeling and then they'll go, but well, I don't really want to do that. And mm -hmm. then add, add another layer of complication on top. I'm like, you know, really, again, it's, it's the simple, it's the simple sort of path through. It's just like, Hey, slow down stick with that first thing, just the feeling part. And you don't even have to talk about it, but just go there and feel it and just actually practice. And so it, it, it is, it's just like anything else. You can do reps. Like yeah. you, you can you literally um, practice this stuff and then it becomes ingrained and then, mm -hmm. and then it starts to, to make its way into men's lives in a natural way yeah. and opens up relationships with families and partners and children and worker yeah. coworkers. It's just, it's, it's amazing. I mean, one thing I, yeah. I talk with men about, I'm curious if this comes up in your conversations too. Um, there's a way, I mean, at first I like to make space for men to just get messy, right? Yeah. There's no right way to express. There's no right way to feel. But I think that a lot of men have come to me with the experience of, well, I, you know, I had one time where I opened up, <laughs> or some men have this, right? I had one time right. where I opened up, I had this experience, I expressed my emotions, it didn't go very well. And so I also like to talk about the difference between having a feeling and dumping a feeling, right? Sure. That, that way of, okay, I can recognize I'm a good man, I'm a good person, and I'm feeling sad right now versus there's something wrong with me. I can't believe it. I'm feeling sad and I'm going to, you know, I, I don't really know what to do with this. So I'm going to kind of dump it out there and hope that you can take care of it because I can't really take care of it. Right. Got it. Yeah. I haven't thought about that distinction, but yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel, uh, yeah. So with the backup, just for a second. So the, you know, if guys have had very few examples of opening up and the, the number of kind of like the one of the main tools that we have and we do this in groups so this is this is like the third step the place to practice right and i already talked about our men's groups and and they are designed simply that when a guy when it's his turn to share when he has the floor when he's going into what's up for him or he's answering a prompt or whatever it is it's everybody else's responsibility to stay in touch with him and if they lose track so it's we're literally attuning to each other to be able to, to tell the difference when a guy is in his head mm -hmm. and is analyzing and judging and all that stuff or when a guy is in like present mm -hmm. and then experientially embodied right so i'm here you can feel it and so that is it's this amazing skill that we get to give each other real-time feedback all the time right and so the dumping of emotion i i feel like and I'm not, I don't know, I'm not going to say this with like finality, but yeah. my feeling in the moment is that 
it is emotion um, wrapped with probably other emotions and judgments yeah. and other things. And it's, it feels uncontrollable. And so in that moment, the main thing that I or our groups would intend for a guy to do be, okay, again, slow down. Let's mm-hmm. stick with the actual experience you're having. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to affirm your experience. And we're going to ask you simply to stick with it for as long as you can. And that, and our, our practice is based on somatic and emotional awareness and how those two interplay. So our bodies yes. um, are, you know, the avenue or the, the home of our emotions. And so, so when we stick with something long enough, it tends to not just... They don't stay like emotions aren't designed. I feel to to just like hang out forever, no, right? They have you're resisting them. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that's kind of, that's what we're doing. Like, all right, just hold on, hang on to it, stay with it, let it move. Like, let yeah. like just give yourself over to it. And it's it is it's a surrender. But like, let yourself freaking feel what you're feeling, and then let's just trust us. It's going to go somewhere, and it mm-hmm. does. And the affirming piece is so important too, right? Especially when there hasn't been that. And so there hasn't been Mm -hmm. support for that emotional expression to then actually, you know, I love as a woman looking into a man's eyes and saying, I'm still here. And actually I feel closer to you and I care about you. And actually you feel really strong to me or right. Any of those affirming which would be different from you guys. It's so important. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, any thoughts on for a man who's dipping his toe, listening to this and thinking, wow, I've heard, you know, my partner has said I, you know, he or she wants me to be more emotional or I'm kind of getting a sense that I've been stuffed up and holding my breath or, right, what do you suggest as a first step? <laughs> Uh, well, I think they're probably in the right place already listening to your podcast or listening to this podcast. I feel like, uh, uh, the, the every man podcast is another offering we have, which is an attempt to, again, normalize, normalize this type of conversation, normalize this type of feeling, honestly, normalize this type of, or this, uh, direction of, of being a man. So I feel like there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of good stuff there to, to soak up and see if this is you know, really appropriate or not. I feel like, um, I feel like there's starting to be a lot of resources Mm -hmm. out there. And, and I think that, well, another thing is that the millennials on our heels about, I think the stat is something like 93% of millennial males are actively looking for more environments that are emotionally safe and emotionally expressive. Aww, I love that. So, so if you're not a millennial and you're older than that, I think there's, I think there might be just some reckoning or some looking around um, or tapping into sort of the zeitgeist of what's happening. I mean, this is, this is definitely entering the cultural sphere now. And, and I think there's a lot of uh, real shift. I mean, there's large, massive corporations and, all kinds of folks are beginning to take this very, very seriously now. So, so that's helpful. And then um, the other thing I'd say is exactly what we're talking about is recognize that this really simply can be contextualized accurately as a set of skills or a set of um, yeah tools that we just don't necessarily have access to yet. And I like to think about the uh, the way that the medical field has decentralized. I think, you know, if you go back 50, 60 years, you had your doctor, your family doctor, and you would go to them for pretty much anything. And today when you look out there, there's nutritionists and, mm. and wellness practices. It's just all like, it's just decentralized. Like knowledge has, has sort of leveled out and spread out. And there's people that have niche understandings of things that are all pretty much very clearly understood to be good you know, good for people. (laughs) And, and in one way I, yeah. So, and the same thing goes with the, I mean, you could call this mental health, you could call it emotional wellness, whatever it is. I mean, you know, if you feel comfortable going to therapist, do it. If you feel comfortable going to a men's group, do it. If like, like wherever you feel okay. And then I would, you know, just offering every man as a resource is we're really doing everything we can to make this accessible for, for men of all types, from mm-hmm. all backgrounds, all places. And, um, 
yeah, I don't know, just know that you're not alone and, and yeah. know also that if you develop your emotional capacity or capacity to connect, it has everything to do with all of the bottom lines that you're thinking about all yes. the time. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. So. And can you say a little bit about maybe what personally has happened for you in your life as a result of being more emotionally available, you know, being more embodied? What, what are you seeing in your life? Yeah. Um, so I have a better marriage than I ever thought was possible. I have a deeper and more loving and, and full relationship with my wife than I, I honestly didn't know mm. this kind of thing was available. I have a, uh, a relationship with my two young boys that, again, it's just, it's wildly overwhelmingly fulfilling. Wow. Like it's just, it's insane. I have just in this last year reconnected with my father who has, we've always loved each other. Uh, he's always been a supporter uh, and vice versa, but he came on a retreat this year after many years of me inviting him into wow. events. And uh, he's gone from someone that I could hardly stand to be around to honestly being one of my best friends. And oh. It's, it's uh that's it's, inspiring. Yeah, and it's not going away. It's just like we did what like there we we did something together that was fundamentally important. Yes. Um and I can keep going here. I mean like I my or this organization and all of my colleagues there is complete beautiful transparency and honesty mm -hmm. and trust and just it's 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 amazing the 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 support and the care and the love and the quality of the individuals in my life yeah, if if amazing. human connection were money i'd be i'd be the uh, probably one of the yeah. richest men in the world okay i love this can you give an example too like say you're having um, you know, something that's coming up for you emotionally, whether, you know, you can choose, right, whether it's with your wife or with a colleague mm. or something, but you're feeling some kind of emotion in the midst of, oh, you know, there's this thing to accomplish or, oh, you know, we've got kids and we've got other things going on here. How do you, how have you set it up so that you could actually bring that to the people close to you? Yeah, just so I make sure I get that clear. So if I'm, if, how do I set up my own system for myself to deal with my emotions amidst yeah. busy life? Is that yeah. the question? Yeah, I want to yeah. to kind of get, oh, you know, if I go home to my partner and I'm starting to feel something that's emotional and I'm a little scared to share it or there are other things going on, you know, how do I set myself up to, to make it safer? Absolutely. So I think my main strategy f for myself is to never really stuff for very long. Like if something is very real for me, if a feeling is there, I will either engage who I'm with and just say it just, just like, and, and not even to hang on it, not to process it, not to, but just to, just to recognize it, it just to say it. Like I'm incredibly angry right now and this isn't okay. And I recognize we have to, you know, get this deal done and we have to work this out. Mm -hmm. But it's, I feel that much of my life, a lot of the issues, a lot of the struggle came from the, um, well, I can't feel that now. So I'm going to pack it in there. I'll go to the gym later. Yeah. And when I'm at the gym, I'll work it out. My anger will come out. And I get it. There's a cathar like we can set ourselves up in that way. We can have catharsis. You know, we can meditate, we can, whatever we do to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I, but I, and that's helpful. And I think that's good. And I think I do that in ways, but I, but then I believe that beyond that, there is a way to, to stay in touch and in flow with things so that things don't necessarily build up. And, yeah. and, you know, I would be, it'd be total bullshit for me to say that things didn't build up because of course they do. But I, but to me, it's the immediacy of, of addressing and and this has taken a lot a lot a lot of work on my part but even without somebody there what i've been working with even recently is so i'll feel something mm -hmm. and then i'll want to close down i'll want to kind of freeze i'll notice that happening i'm like I'll, I, i've done it I, i'm like all right you've done this enough slow down feel it and i'll just like kind of is this this subterranean type of clenching like muscle clenching yeah. that that 
there is and it's hard to talk about and it's hard to figure out how to work with but but there is it's just like no wait i'm gonna feel this and then i'll feel it and then i'll move on you know and and then there's also this connection between the emotions and our feelings and the tasks at hand and and there's this way to in a sense use them as fuel use them as um help as 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 motion forward i feel like uh, that that's a big missing understanding or a missing link too, is that emotions aren't just getting in the way of us getting things done. They're actually, when tapped appropriately, they are a source rocket of fuel. rocket fuel. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's amazing. I was just thinking back to um, this morning too, and I have a practice with my partner where um, – we, you know, really inquire into the moment and what's happening and what's showing up. And part of what showed up for me this morning was um, something he said, I had this moment of, oh my God, I can't do anything right. And I felt sad and I felt scared. And it was so clear to me that it wasn't anything about, I mean, you know, it was kind of pinged by him, but it Mm. was so much about my family when I was young and all of that. And so, you know, for me, I had this sense of like, oh my God, this is the last thing I want to share in the, in this moment. I don't want to show him that I'm starting to cry mm. and I'm feeling emotional because I think this looks whatever way it was in that moment. Like I, I don't look very evolved, you know, I don't look very strong. Sure. So, um, and I did share it. And I think I'm just sharing this story because I also want to be a voice of it's not just men who are going through this. And I think that can actually make it safer sometimes, right? Like when, when I started leading workshops for women after leading workshops for men, I thought, oh, well, women are going to do a, you know, it's just going to be easy for them. We're going to have to do something very different than, than helping men get in touch with their emotions. The women are already going to be in touch with them. Mm. And I actually found that it was way more similar than I had expected it to be. It is quite similar, isn't it? Yeah. And so, you know, I I speak about this too, to say like, when you're in front of another human being, and you know, if that human being is a woman, there are so many places of shame and fear, and Mm -hmm. I should be emotional, and I should be able to be Wonder Woman and do it all. And so then there's just a recognition too of that, that shared humanity that I think makes it safer to actually feel what we're feeling. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think it it would be really remiss to, to think that men are the, you know, the, the sole holders of poor emotional awareness. Right. <laughs> I think that's just, it. and, and I think it, it is valid and helpful. Well, you know, sometimes there's difference and sometimes there's not actually, we did, we did is, a, yeah, it is true that men are less supported Yes. to be emotional and less taught that it's okay and it really does go against masculinity. So I'm not trying to take that part away. Yeah. I just want to speak to the, you know, look across and actually look into someone's eyes and recognize that no matter what that person's showing, there's vulnerability in there. 100%. Yeah. One of the more more beautiful outpourings of emotion I've ever seen was <laughs> we did a, uh, we moved to California from Montana, but when we were in Montana, we did a a group, one of the nights of our group, we had, um, women and men, we invited our partners and friends mm. to come and join us. And there was this young woman that, uh, <laughs> you know, it was like, we got this group of guys, we've been meeting for almost two years and we've really dialed in, you know, our, our emotions and really can share. And, and, um, you know, still it's a little laborious sometimes, you know, like, like guys are just kind of like, it's a little dry. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a little, it's a little stiff. But this young woman stepped up and she just like, just in the matter of probably four or five minutes, she was sobbing and she was laughing and she was, it was like the most wild demonstration of a range of human emotion. Just, and we all kind of just sat there and we're like, holy wow. crap, that's yeah. insane. We had never, we'd never quite seen that from any guy. Mm. Um, but it was so beautiful. Mm. Mm, yeah. Love it. Well, again, I know you said, you know, <laughs> you don't necessarily want the thank you, but I do really appreciate, you know, you, you feel like a translator to me or you're, um, it's like a, a sensei, right? This kind and um, wise 
teacher of, hey, you know, this is this is a part of you and it's not a part to be shoved away and, you know, really reminding the world that there's a lot of pain when that happens. And I think you said I had I had been taking notes one day um, about a talk I was giving and I was really getting like, oh, well, when when men hurt they hurt themselves or others. And then I heard your Ted talk and, you know, I think you basically said almost the same thing, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, getting that we can't, we can't let men walk around in the world unsupported and, and not make it safe to feel. Yeah. It's super destructive. And then the other side of that coin is my core message to men right now in this moment is Mm -hmm. you have no idea the beauty that is so close to you right now like the the amount of love the amount of connection the amount of support like you don't have any idea how near at hand that is Mm. and uh i think that is yeah i mean you know it's the most gratifying thing in the world to work with a man in any capacity and watch them open that door and receive others and give to others and yeah it's Yeah. yeah it's beautiful thank you what what do you want to leave men with and how can they find you? Uh, what I would leave them with is um, just get over yourself and do something new. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where they can find us is everyman.com and the second E in every is gone. So it's E-V-R-Y-M-A-N.com. We've got a podcast, Google us. Um, I would, you know what I would say? Find the men's health article first. It, I, we, it was an article came out three weeks ago, a writer named Nate Green. It is the most accurate and true to life example of what we do. And I'm, I'm so proud that it's in the world. I'm oh, so nice. Um, we can put the link in the podcast too. Yeah, I do. And I, I feel like that is the most because that's a question a lot of men have and women. It's like, okay, I hear it. I like the idea of this, but what do you actually do? That's, that's what everybody always asks. And this article is just simply the best representation of what it actually is. So that's where I would send people first, actually. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.